with Friends Nature Safaris. We are here at Uganda Wildlife Conservation Education Center and we've, have, we've come to see what packages do they have for us. What can they say? How do they try to promote domestic tourism as a recreation center? How have they managed to keep this place? And how welcoming is it? Okay, as we are getting inside Uwek, commonly known as Entebbe Zoo, we are here to meet some people, have a talk with them, see what exactly they've done. How have they managed to, uh, to conserve this place? How welcoming is Entebbe Zoo? Oh, I meet my friend. Hello. Hi, Don. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. Good to see you. Nice to see you too. You're welcome. A long time. Ah, you're welcome, actually. Awesome. S uh, thank you. Great. How have you kept Entebbe? Of course, we are doing great now. Mm. Yeah, and uh, everything is well. Uh, we are doing business very well. Yeah, and uh, everything is going on so well. Yeah, everything is going on so well. You can even see now we have big tent. We even have the tigers. We even have the rhinos. We have the lions. All this is all inside here. All yeah. this here. And of this course, is what is inside there. remember I told you about the beach? Okay. Yeah, properly fo properly feasted now. Everything is there. The restaurant is working. Everything is happening. Are you ready so to take us around the, the place? We have no time. Okay, yeah. thank you. How is zoo? How is tiger enclosure? Oh, this is tiger enclosure. Yes. Okay, how is this place? This place is fresh, as you can see it. The weather has accepted us to also have this kind of tour with you. Really? So it's a lovely place. Oh, nice to meet you here. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Okay, those are the tigers. Now you can tell us briefly. Okay, hi Don. Hi, hi. <laughs> Why the name Don? Um, uh, it, it's it's a long history, but uh, we'll get to that after this too. <laughs> we'll get to that, but it's Don Sam. Don Sam is uh, my name. Yeah, Sam is my dad's name. Don is a French name for donor, donor or gift. So I'm a gift to my dad. Oh, I thought you, ha you have some dames and you give oh, Yeah, I'm also a don in the wild, so yes, uh, my, my don nature is the wild nature. Okay, nice meeting you here at the tiger enclosure. So, uh, briefly, can you tell us what tigers do, what is their hamper time, what time do they get wild, like scaring, eh? what do they eat? Okay, briefly tell us. Awesome, so uh, behind us we are privileged to have the Bengal tigers, these are tigers found in India first of all naturally that's where they live so we are actually even privileged to be the only country with tigers in East Africa so you cannot see a tigers in the wild anywhere in Africa you have to go somewhere in Asia to find them naturally living so our national parks don't have them okay but literally tigers are the biggest cats yeah tigers are bigger than lions they're bigger than leopards and uh, the ones that we have are the second largest in the whole tiger species Okay, so uh, tigers are big cats, they are carnivorous animals, they are built to tear meat, literally to the point that even their tongues are as rough as sandpaper. Imagine what can happen if you got sandpaper and rubbed it on your skin. That's the same effect that would happen in case a tiger licked your skin. Our skin, our flesh is quite soft for them to just disintegrate and remember, I said they are built to tear meat. So. Here, the tigers, we give them around five to eight kilos of beef, goat's meat or chicken. Yeah, and that one always happens in the evening because, as you know, cats are not active during daytime. Cats are mostly active at night. And that's why you see they are all dormant right now. But later in the evening, that's when they get a little bit physical, a little bit active. That's when, as you said, yeah, they can get a bit rough or game time or active time. That would be basically in the evening. And that's also how we get to feed them. 
okay is it okay for me to go inside there and i engage with them will i be safe <laughs> no you won't be safe first we treat our and we normally handle our animals in a semi natural way we don't have this time to pet them or to make cuddle with them and try and bring them closer to you so we don't have that so yes if you got in there you won't be safe you'll actually be at a very big risk and remember as i told you earlier our flesh is quite soft so it will be very easy for them to just lick meat off your bone and you can imagine what that can happen how that can be okay so how many ugandans do you get that come to just have a look at those tigers cuz for the view I've we've been ar moving around but I've seen many uh, outside foreigners in this area and when it came to Ugandans I'm seeing on its cause uh, how how have you tried as you work how have you tried to promote domestic tourism in this area awesome now uh, on a day like today it's more of a school day and remember it's a active weekday so most Ugandans are working now that's why you wouldn't find most of them moving around but we normally get most of them coming over the weekends especially family groups uh, you can talk about uh, friends you can talk about um, colleagues work colleagues guys come here for team building activities we have a nice forest trail people come and just do a cool off in there yeah so for domestic tourism most of our Ugandans come over the weekends when they are freer Okay, the foreigners that you have seen, most of them you might find they're in holiday now, and that's why you'll find this kind of interaction with them at a day like today. But we normally have a lot of Ugandans who come through. Actually, Ugandans have literally supported us, especially after COVID. Yeah, they literally came through, and we we have after COVID we have actually had a very large number of Ugandans coming to this place. Okay, that's nice to hear. And how have you tried to? Uh, keep this place safe, uh, clean as it is, and at least uh, attractive because it's a tourist attraction, one of the biggest tourist attractions we have in Uganda. So how have you kept it to be attractive to everyone who comes here? First of all, I would uh, commend our management because we have a very organized management that has actually helped us through that kind of organization. We, I have colleagues that we work with who basically contribute in totally different ways. We have sections that basically also handle different areas such that you're very sure when a client comes in, they will not lag. Yeah, We also have tried to also make sure we follow the Ministry of Health SOPs so that we make sure all our staff plus the animals are also safe. And we have also made sure that we also have proper trainings that can help us know how to handle visi various visitor groups that come in. We have made sure that we also improve our service delivery time and again, just as I said earlier with the training. That is what has always kept us on the top notch. And yeah, with that time and again, and also the teamwork that all of us have, basically you'll basically have a very good reception from this place and a wonderful place whenever you come here. Okay, thank you, Don Sam. Yeah, I also want to become a Don. So let's proceed with the next. Okay, we've moved around and we're here at the Kimpanze enclosure. Uh, let's meet our tour guide to so, see. This is a chimp island, and uh, we actually name it, uh, it's named after the uh, Budongo National Park. Yeah, so Budongo Forest actually, and uh, we call it the Budongo Island. And here we have the chimpanzees, our closest relatives. And uh, we have a total of around 17 of them on the island. We have seven males and 10 females. And uh, of course, a group of chimpanzees is called a community. So this is our community we have here. And their alpha is called Aluma. Aluma. So, uh, yeah. Chimpanzees uh, basically live in a group called a community whereby they also have leaders in them. And um, in that community, of course, with, being, with having leaders, of course, there are those ones who are on top of the hierarchy and there are those ones who are low in the hierarchy. Okay? And in most cases, whenever you see them in a very big group, that is where you're very sure that at least there is someone who is on top of the hierarchy in that group there. Okay, how friendly are they to human beings? Now, chimpanzees are very dangerous creatures very dangerous first of all they are five times stronger than any human secondly they can literally get sexually attracted to the opposite human gender 
okay, even if you have veiled yourself from head to toe, <laughs> they will know this is a man, this is a woman, and can get sexually attracted or can actually sexually assault you. So they are not friendly. Okay? Now, they fear water. That's why the, this whole area is covered by, is surrounded by water. Why they can't swim. They have very low fat in their body. They can't swim. And that's why this water here is there. So it's more like a barrier protecting us from them. Okay? Okay. So how do you feed them? Because the area is surrounded by water. They are dangerous. No human being can go there. So how do you feed them? So we have a feeding system for them. Uh, they eat four times every day. Okay, and um, this is basically their diet. Yeah, so this is what they eat every day. Breakfast and dinner, they have it in the house. And then break and lunch, afternoon feeding and lunch, they have it here. Now, breakfast and dinner is one of their most favorite foods. And it's because we serve it to them in that house, so they'll know. After, they're intelligent. Let's not put that away. They are very intelligent. And because of that intelligence, literally, they would know after these meals, there is no more food here. So they would literally know the next meal is going to be given them where? In the house. So there's a bridge that they follow behind there. And that's where they pass going to the house. And again, that is also another way of making sure that they do not distort this whole place. Why? Every night chimpanzees make nests using branches and leaves when they go to sleep. If you allowed them to be here for one week, do you still think these trees would still have leaves? Because literally it's like sleeping in new bed sheets every night. And that's how these <laughs> chimpanzees sleep. In actual sense, they might be cleaner than some of us in sleeping. Yeah. Uh, so in there we give them boxes and newspapers and that's what they use to make their nests. Remember I told you they're intelligent so they can craft a nest using branches, using boxes and newspapers from inside that house. And again, that is where their meals are going to begin. Breakfast and dinner. Breakfast, porridge in cups. Dinner, posho on plates. And yes, they can hold cups just like we do. They can hold plates just like we do. So we are proper. You wanted to share. Uh, yes, I wanted to share. Okay, we are here. <laughs> we are here at Inteve Zoo, and you can uh, engage us. How how have you seen tourism? Eh? Yeah. Tourism in Uganda, because I think uh, Uganda is facing a, a problem of tourism, and I think it's one of the biggest earnings that Uganda gets money That's from. So, how have you seen it? Um, tourism is, as you've said, it's still not that. Uh, good but as of now i can say it's picking up okay. because uh, after covid at least we have noticed very many um uh, visitors especially from uganda coming in to visit families the old from very far places yeah which to me i believe is a very positive uh, sign especially in the industry okay so i'm just hoping that as we continue all tour operators, all destination, uh, all, all people having destinations, all people having accommodation facilities would really embrace in selling any product they are selling to the locals such that at least you're very sure a Ugandan can literally sell his country in by just moving to the destinations, sharing pictures, uh, selling, um, having experiences, uh, seeing things and appreciating culture, all that can actually add proper value to the, the industry. So to me, I believe the industry is picking up. The industry is picking up. And how, the, how did uh, COVID-19 affect you when it came to the tourist, tourist industry? Because tourism industry was a bit affected by the, this pandemic that raised up in uh, uh, in 20, was it 2019? Yes, 2019. We faced a challenge of COVID-19 that affected the whole country and the whole country was put down to lockdown. So how did it affect the tourist sector? How, how did you get affected? Yes, of course, uh, you know now uh, our animals are also used to seeing people uh, so of course they started feeling bored because now they are no longer seeing people who used to come in a lot. Uh, you're also having people like, for example, so it was a little bit of a hiccup. Of course, some of us were no longer working now because there was no one to talk to anymore. You could not, you cannot come here and talk to the animals. You basically have to sell the conservation message to people who are no longer coming. So it was really a big hiccup. Some of us, some of the guys I worked with also did not get, did not retain their jobs. So 
it was a really big hiccup in all angles, I should say. Okay, and I, I understand because uh, COVID-19 affected many of us and many people in different sectors. So when it comes to when it comes to tourism, uh, you've told us the challenges that you faced. But after COVID-19, how did you pick up from there? How did you exactly pick up from COVID-19 eh, to see that at least you boost the industry again? So I believe it wasn't a, a real uh, easy pick up, but uh, God helped us uh, to come back on our feet. Yeah, of course, it was a gradual process. Not all of us came back to work immediately, but uh, also during the COVID time, we really had to do a lot of uh, self discovery believe that it was not easy to just remain at home. So they even now come out much, much more than they used to before. So to me, I believe uh, the COVID was also a very good lesson in this time. Okay. Like you've told, you've tried to tell us how you came up. What are those new tactics, tactics that you engaged in after COVID-19? Because the challenge fine was there. You've told us it gave you ample time to reset yourself, to at least uh, try to revise what you have to do. So what did you exactly come up to see that you boost this industry and you keep it on the on the map? Yeah. So basically, I've been telling this. Uh, this uh, product, these products that we have here, we started making sure that we sell it locally. We marketed ourselves locally, especially to communities around. We decided to be more of, uh, reaching out to communities that live around us. Yeah, we we actually also reached out. Okay, and what do we expect to find here? Yeah, so this is a shoebill enclosure. This is a shoebill holding. We have one of the most unique birds, actually the most viewed bird in the country. Very many people come from the whole world to just come and see the shubu. And uh, it's a unique part because of its levity. According to um, what science says, it has never evolved. So there is no known species that has ever lived before this one that you're really seeing here. So that unique behavior, its way of life, it lives in wetlands. It's only known to exist in like around four countries in the whole world. And Uganda has the largest distribution of the shoe bill. So it's a beautiful bird, solitary living. Uh, it's a close relative to the marabou stock, if you know the calori. Okay, yeah. so without wetlands, it can't survive. Exactly. So give us some brief and some encouraging words on how people and why people should conserve our wetlands. Those mindsets, evil, bad mindsets that communities have so that actually they can start thinking totally different, positively, such that you can basically... Oh, so also your work does education uh, empowerment sessions, yeah? Mm -hmm. on, on how to conserve the environment. I am a I conservation educator, so... Really? I didn't I, know about my, that. My main job is to basically change people's mindsets about their perception about wildlife, whatever they knew about it before. Now when they come through and they have a tour with me, they get a totally different perspective about what they used to know. How can people access you? Um, come to UAC. <laughs> okay. Uh, as we are heading... Okay. Uh, you know, as Friends Nature Safaris, uh, we are trying to promote domestic tourism within the country. Yes, and we've come up with a certain project that we are looking out to see how we can promote domestic tourism within our fellow Ugandans. You know, how have you seen as 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 you work? How have you seen domestic tourism? Because we want that experience from you, and you tell us, and we also see where to start up from. Yeah? How can we try to help you? How can we help ourselves to boost the tourism industry? So now, thank you very much, first of all, for championing uh, building domestic tourism because that's our biggest clientele now, especially after lockdown. And uh, I believe with time, as long as you find a way, uh, as I told you, my work is to change people's mindsets. By the time you find a way of making sure that uh, you can convince a local to buy a product that they are not seeing. It's, it is intangible. It's not, they can't see it physically. The only way you can do that is basically finding out a way of making sure that they can afford 
to buy that product. And then now, how many people can buy it repeatedly? Now, if you have like a people from a specific of money and they think only the privileged ones let me say the, the ones they call rich are the ones to invest in such but how can we try to change their uh, mindset just find you should first of all find out what do they love then after you find out what they love you can basically now know how can i tailor make something that can easily make that guy, what he loves, come into my docket. Now that you're in the tourism industry, if you find out that I love Luombo, for example, and I would love Luombo in a, I would love to eat Luombo in a garden area. As a tour operator, how can I make Don Sam, who loves Luombo, basically leave his village and come and have his Luombo in a place like the zoo? Okay. something of that sort so all that logistics it's 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 a, it's a it's a smart logistics but again it needs you to understand your clients first when you get to know what they want it's very easy for you to tell them make something that they can easily want and have and repeatedly have and repeatedly have uganda mm -hmm. the very country mm -hmm. that do come and engage in two tourism and come for uh, some tourist attractions that are in this place and they love their nature they love their country because the fact that someone loves his or her nature or the country mm -hmm. so he will be able to conserve it mm -hmm. So, so they will fight with us in the conservation of the country. Exactly. Yes. So now, um, as, I, as, as you can start, as I told you earlier, I told you make the product affordable. We have a restaurant by the beachside. You can have your meals there. We have a kids park. You can be here for the whole day for the children. All the costs are affordable. So um, very, everything around here, this is more like a one-stop shop. Okay. One-stop shop, you get everything you want in one place at an affordable cost. So one of the greatest ta tactics that you used uh, to, 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 uh, to boost domestic tourism was making it friendly, like pocket friendly. Pocket friendly. So everyone can afford. Exactly. The prices are affordable. Yes. They are cheap. They are proper. Aff if you want luxury way of expenditure, you can have it. If you want a but like it's the proper disinvestation, you can have your meal. If you're on a budget expenditure, you can basically exp express yourself. If you're on a luxury expenditure, you can still express yourself. So you anyone cannot be limited. Okay, that's cool. That's where uh, Friends Nature Safaris will join you to try to promote uh, domestic tourism. And for us as Friends Nature Safaris, we've come up with a project. And in this project, we are trying to promote domestic tourism in the country. So we've target, we've, our target are these students. Okay, how have you packaged yeah. that? We've packaged it that we go to schools and attend to these students, uh, create awareness uh, of uh, uh, about. Basically, it would be very, very interesting when uh, you involve all those groups, all those young ones, the younger generation, about conserving wildlife and even loving their country because it even helps them. Actually, much, much mind blowing and eye opening that you're sure even he will make sure his children will know his young, his friends, his peers, yeah. And yeah, now we are actually in our animal exhibit, so you can... Wow! Wow! <laughs> yeah. That's ah, so, so big exactly. and very dangerous. Yeah, they're very I'm even dangerous. scared to go there. They're very dangerous. We, we can, we can, we can stop here. We can stop here. <laughs> Seriously? And if it were possible, there are times when it comes closer here. And you touch it? And yeah, if, if you if you know what you're doing, yes, you can touch it. But if you don't know what you're doing, it might be very dangerous. I'm scared. You can jump it <laughs> it's only here and Ziwa Rhino Sanctuary. Okay? And Uganda does not have more than 40. Actually, it does not even have that more than 35 rhinos in the whole country. And if you don't go to Ziwa, you have to come here. Uh, how old do they last? They can even live up to 40 years. 40? Yes. 
can live up to 40 years, but that is basically when they are in captivity. In the wild, they normally 40, 30, 35, 40 mostly. Now, how old is that one? These ones are in their 20s. 20s? Yeah, they are, you can say, yeah, they are in their um, mid age. They are adults, but they are, they are almost about to die. So they grow bigger than that? No, no, no. This is almost like an adult already. So, yeah. So, yeah, in most cases, such kind of animals are very hard to poach. I'm sure you've heard of the big five. Yeah, the big five are the animals that you can basically hardly kill using a spear. Mm. Yeah, and it is very hard for you to kill those animals unless you have a gun. This is one of them. When this thing is an adult, it weighs six, three thousand kilos. That is a fully grown adult. It takes 16 months when it's pregnant. 16 months? That's one year and four months. And for them, in their lifespan, they can give birth 12 times or three times only what do they feed they are grazers they are they eat plant matter okay and yeah that is they have they are the rhinos with the widest mouths so this is one of the only places where you can see them natural yeah and if you don't come back if you don't come here you cannot see them in any national park in the country how many do you have here two there are two only those ones and the male one is the one with the sharp horn the female is the one with the shorter horn yeah <laughs> no, these ones haven't conceived here. But Never. they do. Yeah, and we have, they can conceive, but we have not seen their offspring from here. And we have some assumptions, which well, we have about rhinos, which are like around four assumptions, which might be true or not true. So yes, it is part of the studying that we are doing here. At a certain extent, can they be friendly to human beings? Uh, friendly? You can pet them, yes, but you cannot keep them at home. <laughs> yeah, you can't keep them at home. You imagine that three-ton animal in your backyard. <laughs> okay. They cannot attack you. No, but in most cases, the animal keepers who get in, they have to get in with like hay and grass so that we can Yeah. So, yes. welcome to our beach line. This is uh, our more of like a picnic area. Uh, we have the longest speech line in Entebbe now. For us who want to slay, we come exactly. this day. Exactly, this is your corner. You can come with your mats. You can just put your mat anywhere. Mm. Uh, you have all the space up to the other end that will basically be soft for you. <coughs> yeah, and uh, of course, here swimming is at your own risk. Yeah, please, if you cannot swim. <laughs> Uh, do not so so you don't encourage us to swim? No, we encourage you to swim. I, I wanted even to own... get my no, no, clothes no, no, off no, and I now, start not swimming. Not now, not now. <laughs> so, yeah, but yeah, swimming is still at your own risk. We have a very uh, steep gradient, especially of uh, the lake. Mm. Here, there are people who come for water bad lovers. They watch birds too. I'm, I'm seeing some cottage. Is it a cottage? Is it a house? Is it a what yeah, over that, there? We call that a floating restaurant. Oh, wow. So literally, it's supposed to be give you that feeling of as if you're floating on water. In a way, yeah. But now, uh, very soon, I'm th I, not very soon, or sooner or later, we're actually going to exit and go up. Such that uh, after that, your uh, after balcony your, part, exactly. Like after your wedding, you don't need to go for honeymoon elsewhere, you just go upstairs. Wow. Exactly. This is like Victoria. Mm -hmm. In fact, mm -hmm. as Friends Nature Safaris, mm -hmm. we are also trying to promote uh, domestic tourism. Okay. And the Friends Nature Safaris came quiz. up with a... Wow. So, yeah, Pal Quiz. What's Pal Quiz? Pal Quiz. Uh, briefly, Pal Quiz, it's a project we came up with to try promote domestic tourism. Let's meet in the next episode. Uh, Still Pal Quiz, powered by Friends Nature Safaris. Catch up, Pal Quiz!